Welcome to Vermontitude, a collaborative effort between Great Eastern Radio, the Brattleboro Reformer, and BCTV to bring you the stories behind the stories on the topics you want to learn more about. Because there's always more, so there'll always be Vermontitude. Hosted by me, Peter Fish Case. Welcome to Vermontitude. New episodes drop every Tuesday and can be found by going to vermontitude.com, reformer.com, or BCTV. We come to you from our studios at the Innovation Box on Flat Street. I'm Peter Fish Case, and each week I cover the topics that are a concern to Wyndham County and the towns that reside within its borders. Today, we're speaking with photojournalist, multimedia editor, Chris Ratter from the Brattleboro Reformer. Welcome, sir. First timer. Yes, sir. All right. So we're looking forward to it. Now, now Chris has covered a myriad of different stories, so we're just going to get uh, hit and uh, hit right into them. Uh, l- let's start. Uh, Mike Pence came to the uh, Monadnock region over in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. So Mike Pence kind of pretty much started my road to 2024. Um a lot of the big name uh, candidates always seem to roll into Keene. And so he, for this election cycle, seemed to be one of the first ones to come in. And it's really interesting to cover a former vice president at such a low-key type event. It was very warm, welcoming, and he just seemed very open and eager to meet everybody in the room. Well, he was signing books. Yeah, and selling you, books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, at this point, I feel like they're all selling books. Yeah. Up until probably July once they start getting to the nitty gritty of things. Right. Uh, all right. Well, that so that was good. So he's come and he's gone. Um, but uh, another thing that has come and gone was this last snowstorm. Man, what a mess. But I just know it from my corner of the world. I lost power for two and a half days. Um, and uh, the, the, all those folks that did all the hard work, thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, but tell us about some of the harder affected areas. Tell us what you saw when you were out there doing your photojournalism. Uh, once you got beyond the urban areas and out into the more rural environments, you saw a lot more of the damages, the disaster that struck local residents, the trees that were down, like massive trees that would take crews several hours to clear out like going down Heinsberg Road was just one example of like a road that took a long time to reopen to repair to fix during my time out on Heinsberg Road I saw an elderly couple just kind of like trying to make their way through the snow so I kind of helped them forge through a path to my car and helped them get down to Brattleboro because they got stranded on the other side. Right. Okay. And so, yeah, just a big mess. Now, uh, one of the things that that uh, when we stopped and talked, my wife stopped and talked to one of the road crew people, and we were just trying to get a beat on, like, hey, any idea, like, when we might get our power back or when this part of town might get our power back? And the, and the guy said, look, honestly, we spent literally the first day just clearing trees. Did you find that that was the case everywhere? It was. Uh, when I was out and about on Tuesday driving around when the snow was falling, it wasn't just road crews that were out there helping. It was good Samaritans. I came across this one down tree that was covering a good section of Route 5 in Guilford. And this man from Vernon was driving around with a chainsaw, cutting up trees and helping to clear the road so it'd be open for a lot of people. And that was one thing that I noticed a lot during the storm was there was a lot of good Samaritans. It wasn't just your first responders and people that are always out there. It was everyday people out, everyday Vermonters, everyday New Hampshireites that were out there trying to make a difference, trying to uh, make sure that things were open. Yeah, I think you know that that is an amazing part, and I think it as probably the case for you as it is for me. It always sort of reminds me as to why we live where we live because yeah. people do they'll just grab their chainsaw and say, "Well, all right, we better get back to work." Yeah, that that was a that was a beautiful thing. Like I come from, I grew up in Syracuse, so like snow was a thing. Yeah, I yeah. mean you had to learn to drive in the snow, and around here you don't really see that much snow, but the. Just the sense of community and coming out to help people is definitely very present in this community, even as divided as people may be political wise. When when it comes down to like actually time of help, people around this community are willing to help. And that's one of the 
great things I love about documenting this community. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for sure. I think that that is a that's a great point that you make. You get to document it every time it happens. And that's good. What were some of the, uh, the biggest snow totals that you had experienced while you were out there during this last storm? Um, unfortunately, I didn't have my ruler on me. So but by guesstimations, like I feel like there was sometimes like going out, there was like 15 to two feet of uh, 15 inches to two feet, depending on where you went. Bells Falls, Saxons River got a lot of snow in, in the higher up snow toes. So, so did Walpole had a very high snow total. Uh, but the snow was just so heavy that affected the trees more than anything. And so where you saw most of the damage was around Hinsdale, around around uh, Brattleboro, in the outlying areas. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, well, I think we're all we're, we're pretty much all t- talked out on the snow thing because we just I'm just glad it's already melting. It's already going away. Uh, let's jump to the uh, the fatal crash on Route Nine. Yeah. T- tell us a little bit about that. Um, I, I saw a call go out to uh, that there was a motor vehicle crash, and I tend to follow a lot of. Um, activities on social media which is a great way to gauge a story and i saw this uh thing come across of a car versus a tractor trailer Mm. so i mean i had no clue at the moment whether it was a fatal or not right i just knew there was a major incident and a road was being closed and my job is to help get the information out there and that's what i like to do is make sure that everyone is well aware of the full situation happening in their community. Right. Um, where, uh, so um, refresh us as to the, the, the fatality occurred in the car, correct? Yeah, so the car, um, it came out in the press release today uh, that the uh, new, that the Vermont DMV released because they were the investigating agency that the man who was from, um, Winchester, New Hampshire, uh, um, veered across the double yellow and went across into the rear axle of the tractor trailer where the tractor trailer rolled, drove over him. And fortunately, the passenger had injuries, but not super severe. So they were able to get the passenger out and they transported her to Brad Memorial and then later to Dartmouth Mm -hmm. for, um, for observations and 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 we're still looking for more details to be officially released on this story. Yep, the the uh, everything is uh, still under investigation. Uh, currently, the person's body was transported to uh, to the medical examiner up in Burlington. Okay. All right. Um, and now you did a nice piece on um, uh, on a gentleman who is, is looking for a kidney. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I saw this uh, GoFundMe of uh, I. I have a huge background in medical. Um, before I got fully into newspaper photography, I used to do photojournalism work with the United States Navy, where I used to document humani- humanitarian aid care over in Southeast Asia. So I tend to lean towards medical stories a lot. So I saw this GoFundMe of a man that needed a new kidney, and I reached out and talked to his wife and all that, and found that this guy was a, uh, a he was a tr- he traveled around the United States doing repairs on power plants and heavy machinery like that, and he said like he started feeling a pain and all that, and uh, he found a pl- he was originally from Jacksonville, Florida, but he. Um, Really loved this area because uh, one of his buddies came up here and he rediscovered this area. So he and his wife decided this is where they want to retire. So they moved up here, but he was still doing his traveling around work and do, fixing up machines until he had that stomach right, type pain. Right. So he went to Brad Memorial Hospital and found out that he had stage four kidney failure. And so I wanted to amplify out there that this man, a local resident, is asking the local community that he needs help. He needs search for a kidney. And hopefully 
they'll find it. All right. And do you have information on, on uh, how people can find if they'd like to donate, if they're seeing this? Uh, there, there is a uh, GoFundMe page. Unfortunately, his name's currently slipping my yep. head. But if they do look it up on the Reformer page, we do have a direct link to the GoFundMe. All right. That's good enough. Um, let's uh, l- 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 let's kind of go to a, a note of that what that, that that storm did a lot of bad. Yeah. But it did a little bit of good, too, if you're in the maple sugar in- oh, yeah. industry. Yeah. Yeah. So this weekend is going to be the uh, Vermont open house for maple sugaring. And a lot of the maple, uh, a couple of the maple sugar sugarers were telling me that with the added snowfall onto the ground, it'll extend their sugaring season up until early April, hopefully, oh. because um, they need that type of uh, level of snow on the ground to help the sap flow that they need to gather. Okay. Uh, what did, Do you know when the season was going to end prior to the storm? Did, did they I, I, say? Um, unfortunately, like, that's the crazy thing about weather is like uh, – once you get like a good bit of uh, great weather, it just ends the sugaring season. And you never know. Weather is very unpredictable. You, um, we assumed that because it was such an early season of uh, sugaring that it was going to end early. But it's it's gone per- fairly long. Like the sugaring season started like a lot of people said they started boiling around uh, the end of January, and now they're going to be able to go all the way until early April, which is a lot longer than many sugaring seasons. All right. Well, that's good. So that's a good banner year for those guys, yeah. uh, the folks at the Rob Farm and Boyd Farms and all the places that, that do that. Do, do you cover them a lot? I've covered Boyd's and all of them. Um, I try to uh, circulate around all of them. That yeah. way I'm not showing any favoritism towards one <laughs> sugar or the other. Fair enough. But uh, – I am always looking for the small time sugar, the backyard person that has a, a little uh, little setup for one. So if anyone's right. out there has one of those, they can always reach out to me because right. I'm always out looking for that. There you go. K Ratter at reformer.com. Reach out, and that guy right there will uh, come out and uh, do a little photojournalism on a small independent uh, um, sugar. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. All right, great. Uh, anything else we're missing, Chris? I think you hit it all. All right. Thank you for having me. No, thanks for being on Vermontitude. That's uh, that's photojournalist and multimedia editor Chris Ratter from the Brattleboro Reformer, and this has been another episode of Vermontitude.